Maybe you've tried all sorts of healing techniques from Reiki healing, you've tried talk therapy, you've tried sweat boxes, shamanic journeying, you've tried crystal healing, you've tried meditation, breathwork, all of these different tools and modalities to help you heal and you feel like nothing is working. Well, that's because you have to take the embodiment approach when it comes to healing. And in this video, I'm going to share with you why that is. And by the end of the video, you'll hopefully have some more tools and knowledge and how you can process your shame, your guilt and your anger. Let's dive in. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. If you are new around here, my name is Christina and I help empower people on their spiritual and their healing journey so they can have a more fulfilling and purposeful driven life. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so then you're notified of when I post a video. So now I've said all of that let's get on to the good stuff. So you're watching this video because you've probably got so far in your healing or maybe you're just starting out but often we try different modalities, tools because we want to kind of get over, let go of our emotional past pain, our traumas, our shame, our guilt, all of the stuff that we tend to hold on to and you feel like and I think it's really working. You've done all of the, the modalities, you have a daily practice, maybe a ritual, and in, nothing's really working. Because what happens is when we go through something traumatic, something stressful, this often happens when we are younger. And when we are young, we don't have the skills, the coping skills, the skills to help us process an emotion, especially if your parents weren't embodying that divine masculine or the divine feminine, they didn't have the skills themselves to know how to process an emotion. So you wasn't role modeled at that. They didn't help you through that emotion. Maybe you were left alone to cope with your stressful or traumatic experience. And so what happens, because we're not able to process it, so for an example, this could be where a child needs to explain the event over and over and over and over and over again. They'll keep retelling the story over again. And then your parents go, oh, shut up, it wasn't that bad. Get over it. This is the child trying to process what they went through, their experience. And if the child, or you for example, weren't able to process that. What can happen is the body holds on to that because you weren't allowed to be able to feel that and allow the emotion to flow through you and out of you and come back into homeostasis, come back into a regulated state. Especially when we are younger, we have underdeveloped emotional brains, so we are very highly emotional and internalize a lot of things. So this means we hold on to emotional pain and we've struggled to let that go. It's only until we become parents ourselves, we kind of go through a spiritual awakening, we kind of become more wise and we realize that we actually had a very hard time growing up. And now we decide to go on the journey of healing. But then you're at this current situation now where you're like, well, what? tool, what tip do I get? And this is the trap we can get ourselves stuck in. We can get ourselves stuck in the logical mind of thinking when it comes to healing. We feel like we have to find that ultimate book, that ultimate tool, that ultimate video course, whatever it may be, to get us out, to help us let go of emotional pain. So maybe you are at that stage and you've tried different tools, different modalities like talk therapy, and unfortunately, sometimes these can keep us trapped in the negative thought cycle of the story. It keeps us stuck in the story, and this is stuck in the logical mind. But what we have to do when it comes to releasing emotional pain is dropping into the body. We have to use embodiment practices to help us let go, help us release the emotion. Because what is embodiment? Embodiment means doing it through the body, allowing you to embody the emotional pain for a bit. We allow the body to express the emotion. 
you, we have to allow our bodies to express the emotion. So this means channeling your rage, channeling your shame, your guilt in an embodied way. So this means we do this through activities that help us to create the feeling in the body. And what we need to do is we have to feel the emotion in the body to heal it. So when we are using embodiment practices, we are allowing the emotion to surface in the body, allowing it to be there. So when I say embody that emotion, we embody that rage through an embodiment practice. And an embodiment practice allows the emotional pain to surface, it allows you to feel it, it allows you to express it, and then we're able to finally release it. We're allowing the emotion that we were holding onto that we couldn't process to finally be processed. So what, how this is, is expressing the emotion. So this means could be just crying. We're expressing the emotion. We're releasing it. And if you want to finally release your emotions, feel lighter, feel like you're not being trapped by your emotional pain and making choices out of fear because you are operating from your trauma and your pain, come and join me on the 17th of November for an embodiment healing workshop. I'll be diving into the topic of embodiment much deeper than this video. I'll be guiding you through a mindfulness awareness technique that helps you to drop from your mind into your body and release tension from your body. So if you want to come and be part of a safe, sacred container with me and other people, click the link in the pinned comments below to sign up and claim your seat for the 17th. So hopefully by now you've got an understanding of what I mean by embodiment and why we have to use that when it comes to healing. So what are some of the practices and the tools we can use to embody, to use for embodiment when it comes to healing? Things like journaling, movement, mindfulness techniques, anything that helps us to kind of drop into our bodies rather than the mind. Because when we are doing things like journaling or movement, we're kind of creating that inner dialogue. We're creating that inner dialogue to help us express that emotion. And that's what we really need to achieve when it comes to uh, healing with embodiment. We have to allow that emotion to be witnessed, allow it to be felt and so then the emotional energy of that flows through us and out of us. So say for example, you may already know this, when you've had a really good cry or when you've had a really good write in your journal, you always feel so much better after that because you've allowed the emotional energy to kind of be expressed, to be released, and then you feel so much better. It's the same goes for meditation. Sometimes when I'm feeling a little bit heavy, I go and meditate and after I feel a hundred times better. And so we can use these practices to help us with our emotional healing. And if you want to come and join us on the 17th, learn way more tools about embodiment and actually be guided through an embodiment process to finally release some emotional pain, click the link in the pinned comments and claim your seat now. So with that all being said, I will see you on the next video. Much love.